What's going on, y'all? So What's going on, y'all? So we are back. We are back. We are back for another what it is video. Um, <clears throat> yes, let's just get into it. Um, at the top of this video, first of all, like I said, I know it's a lot of stuff that's gonna be going on this Saturday. Okay. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Hold on one second, y'all. <coughs> oh, I've been having to do that sneeze. Excuse me. All day. It just won't come, and now I turn. Now it came. So. I got that out the way. Cleared my sinuses. But anyway, it's a lot of stuff that's going on this Saturday. Um, top of the thing, um, I will be doing some promo, whatever, for, like I said, I mentioned the movie Christmas Lottery. Somebody put up in my comments, girl, no, okay? And you know who I'm talking about. Oh, this your chance to get on Team Candace and to be nice. Uh, girl, shut up, okay? Be quiet, be quiet, be quiet. Don't do that, don't do that. Because once again, I never said I hated that girl. I didn't like that girl. I just don't like her in a situation that she's portraying herself on Real Housewives of Potomac. That has nothing to do with this, okay? I give people credit where that's due. You know, she going outside the realm, um, getting these paid gigs, you know, acting, doing what she got to do. And I'm all the way here for it. And I hope she does well in this movie. It's called Christmas Lottery. Um, it's going to be on BET this Saturday. Now, I know it's going to conflict a little bit because if you guys are not watching the verses, but y'all know the verses don't never start on time. So y'all can go ahead and check out Christmas Lottery, you know, um, see what that's about. And then turn the verses on in the background too, or, you know, had a movie on in the background so we can get some ratings and stuff like that. Either way, it's about to be a mess that's gonna happen on Saturday. And I'm about to be all the way here for it because I'm gonna be watching both, all right? Speaking of, speaking of, listen, <laughs> the versus is happening, okay? The versus is happening. Keisha Cole came out. You know, did I say hello to y'all? Did I say hello? Hey, y'all, how y'all doing? I don't mean to be rude or whatever because that ain't how I am. But, um, you know, the versus is happening. Keisha Cole had put out, on her Instagram, and I don't know if I mentioned it last week or whatever, she said that she is doing a versus and it was confirmed. And at this point in time, we like confirmed with who, boo-boo? Confirmed with who, boo-boo? Um, how you just gonna put out a one-sided versus? You gonna be playing your hits to yourself, okay? Um, and then it came out, like, right after I put my what it is up, you know, that she will be doing the verses with Ashanti. Now, Andrew, she was trying to get that verses done with Ashanti a while ago. Because when she mentioned herself, she mentioned that she wanted to do with it Ashanti. You know, and a lot of people keep playing Ashanti as if she don't get hits. Yes, you know, Ashanti hasn't came out with anything in years. I don't care about that. Say less bullshit. It was bullshit, okay? Um, she hasn't come out with nothing in years, but we can't sleep on the fact that Ashanti has hits, okay? And we can't sleep on the fact that Keisha Cole has hits too, and Keisha Cole has albums, okay? Now, let me tell you something. Now, I was, I was, listen, listen, hear me out, hear me out, because I can be real petty. I'm rooting for both girls, all right? But in reality, because of the situation that Keisha Cole blocked me, Keisha Cole blocked me on Twitter for what? I don't know, okay? Maybe it was around the time when she was talking about Beyonce bow down hoes and, you know, when she kind of shaded Michelle on the Super Bowl or whatever. I don't know. Did I say something? I probably didn't. I know I never at her. But then, you know, these celebrities be searching their names and shit like that. So, maybe that was the situation. Either way, I don't care. I'm all here for the music, but I'm going to be rooting for Ashanti. <laughs> I'm petty. I'm petty. Let me stop. Let me stop. I'm be rooting for both of the girls because this is like 2000s, okay? Like, this is my era. This is what I grew up. Baby, baby, happy. Da, da. Girl, don't let Ashanti put her category up there where she songwrite it and that she sang vocals on. Don't let her put J-Lo category up there, catalog up there, I should say, okay? Because then, bitch, it's going to be over. <laughs> it's going to be over. It's going to be over. Let me tell you this, Keisha, Keisha, Keisha finna have y'all all in y'all feelings when she play I Should Have Cheated because you know she gonna play that. And when she play Love, okay, she gonna have y'all all up in y'all feelings. Bitch, Keisha, let me tell you something, okay? I don't know the beef that we got with each other. We probably don't have one. It's non-existent. You probably didn't even realize that you blocked me, but that's cool. It's whatever. But do me a favor and make sure you play Trust. Okay, don't pay that song dust. Even though Monica watched you on your own song, I don't know why Monica did that. 
I don't know why Monica did that. And I went back and I listened to the album version and I went and looked at the BT version that um they sang live. And Monica really ate her up on both on both versions, okay? And I said, Monica, why would you do that? Why you you and didn't even put the song on her album? Like Monica sang that song like it was on her album. No, girl, you don't do no shit like that. But you got to play that. That's one of my favorite Keisha Cole songs for real, for real. But um, because vocally she was there, okay. For me, Keisha has hits and misses with her vocals. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes it can be like. A little yodely, little candy-ish, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes I feel like Candy can't sing, you know, from Escape. And sometimes I feel like, okay, she can carry a tune right here and right there. That's how I feel with Keisha Cole sometimes, but her music is, she's listenable. It don't bother me, you know? And same thing with Ashanti. Ashanti ain't the best singer. Back in the day, let me tell you something. Back in the day, this is how much I've grown. Because back in the day, I used to think, see, Ara can blow her ass off. And I used to think uh, uh, Ashanti could sing her ass off. My ears have matured, okay, as I got older. And I realized that that's just not true, okay? In most cases, it's just not true, all right? And we have to come to the fact. But what makes them so much good to listen to is the fact that they get the right production, the right material, and they stay in their lane, and they stay in their pitch, they stay in their tone, and it comes out good. And you don't mind that they can't really sing. They can hold a tune here and there, but they can't blow. You know what I'm saying? And it works for them, you know? So I'm all the way here for that. You guys tell me who you got. I got both the ladies, you know? When we go into these verses, I really don't pick size because 9 out of 10s, when they put these verses together... I, they always putting people together with people I like, like this person I like versus this person I like. And I'm like, damn, both of these was my childhood. Both of these was my teenage years. Both of these was my twenties. What are you talking about? I can't choose. I'm going to be rocking to both. Okay. That's what's going to be going on. But, um, yeah, y'all tell me who y'all looking forward to in this versus battle. If you're going to be watching, you know what I'm saying? Um, I got to go find some rubber bands to put on the end of my um my jeans and my Air Force Ones and shit and give me a little bandana or whatever, a little sweatband or whatever, because that's what's the mold back then, you know what I'm saying? I got to get a little poom poom up in my hair, you know, but it's cute. It's cute. What y'all doing? Anyway, so let's get into some more of the mess that's been going on in <laughs> entertainment, all right? Um, the girl's been cutting up this week, and I just don't understand it. Um, Cardi B, sweet tea. Sweet, sweet Cardi B. Baby girl, baby girl. And now I know I be putting stuff out there on social media, but you can't tell me about my life from my tweets, okay? I don't tell y'all all the stuff about what I'm going to do, what I got in my bank account. If I do mention money, it's talking about, oh, I just pay my bills. And I got a little change left. And I don't say the specific amount because I know everybody ain't got that much. But, bitch, it ain't a whole lot, okay? But it's enough to get me through a couple of weeks or whatever if I stretch that bitch. I'm, I'm not struggling, struggling, you know? But I'm not on social media, and most of us are not on social media saying, I got this amount of money. Should I buy this or should I buy this, okay? A big purchase, you know what I'm saying? Y'all going crazy over but, you know what? Now that I think of it... Okay, now see, I get it because we are in a pandemic. Cardi B basically put out a tweet saying, should she buy this $88,000 bag? You know, that's what she was talking about. You know, it would have been better had... It's tone deaf. That's what it is. It's tone deaf. And at one point, I was like, what's the difference? Because everybody was dragging her for saying it. And I was like, well, just a month or so ago, y'all was having the Birkin bag, the Birkin bag competition. And nobody seemed to care about that. Um, and, you know, people was like, well, it's because we're in a pandemic. And I'm like, I get that. We are in a pandemic at this point in time. And it was tone deaf. It was very tone deaf because... Why do, first of all, if you wanted to say you wanted to get a bag, just put down, man, should I get this bag or should I not get this bag? She didn't have to put the price in there. And I think that probably would have quelched a lot of things. It would have avoided a lot of things. But putting that 88000 when a lot of people are out here trying to struggle with student loans, trying to come up with um, 
ways to pay their rent and you know to get to the day through the day to support their families and pay their bills and you know we're going through this pandemic right now and people literally looking for the next for the next day and seeing if they have that and jobs and stuff and I get the insensitivity of it but at the same time this was been going on and I ain't really see that much uproar about it when entertainers used to do that prior to the pandemic when unemployment was still a thing when poverty was still a thing you know um and then also we got people going crazy over these ps5s that's like 600 some dollars 700 some dollars a thousand dollars and shit like that but nobody getting pissed off at them for like saying well ooh, you can get a ps unless it ain't no my timeline everybody looking for a ps5 so for some reason you know, we ain't got money to pay our bills, but we got money to get a PS5. I, you know, it just, let me know what's up, okay? But I get it. I get the outrage, and I get it to a certain extent. Like, it was extremely tone deaf. Why do we need to know that it was $88,000? It's like you're bragging at this point that you have this money and you're well off. But then again, you're a celebrity, so of course we would suspect, we would expect that you would be well off and you would have that money and stuff like that but you could have kept that to yourself everything don't need to be tweeted and it's a time and it's a place and you have to read the room okay you have to read the room and then what really made it even worse was instead of just taking a tweet down or just saying my bad or whatever you know the responses that she was giving to everybody was just like very double down it on it and i donated to this charity and all that that's very much well we know you donate to charities but you can donate to all the charities and foundations in the world and still be tone deaf than a motherfucker and that's what you was at that moment you was tone deaf okay and I just didn't like the way she played that out. Mostly, I didn't like her response to it. That's what it was. You guys tell me how, you know, these young people with money, truth be told, I just don't see what, $88,000 on a bag? I know these bags appreciate and stuff like that, and you can sell them and probably get more money for them, but that's $88,000 I could probably use to do, put to better use, okay? That's just how I'm thinking of it, you know? Um, you guys let me know how you feel about it, but it was very tone deaf. And then you got JT from the City Girls, okay? JT wound up deactivating her Twitter for like a few hours or whatever. She was back the next day, if that, um, because they found one of her tweets talking about something she liked dark skin girl, but not too crispy or something like that. I think that's what popped it off because I came on Twitter and I just realized that, all of these tweets from JT are popping up on my timeline. Now, I do follow her, but these are tweets that was coming back from, like, 2011, 2012, 2013, 2014, 2015 and shit. And they were problematic as hell. I'm sitting here like, <laughs> what is this? I don't even want to go through what most of them were saying. You, girl, you just got to go look. Go look up JT old tweets, okay? I'm pretty sure it's a thread. It's a thread. And I was just like, oh, my God, wow. And her defense was basically her and Santana because, you know, that's his homegirl and he had to come to her defense. You know, um, we're celebrities, but before we were celebrities, we was just like, y'all, so fuck it. You know, y'all, it's like y'all ain't tweet some stuff on y'all timeline and stuff and, and put it on your Twitter. And that's true. That's true. We all guilty of tweeting some stuff and we, but the difference is, you a celebrity now. So what that should have did is, and this is what it is. These social media, where's the social media department in most of these record labels? You got to come up with the time, okay? As soon as you get a new artist, you need a social media handler with them, just like an A&R or whatever. You need the social media handler so that they can go through your tweets or just clear your whole thing before anybody can come back, especially in this day and age when everybody's getting canceled because of old tweets that's popping up and stuff like that. Why don't y'all have social media handlers that are just wipe y'all shit clean first and then you can avoid all this because we know everybody has a past. We know everybody's talk reckless because back in the day, Twitter wasn't so sensitive as it is now. You know, social media, I should say, wasn't so sensitive as it is now. But, you know, her, she just don't give a fuck. I don't know how I feel about that. Like, 
take, re I mean, do you take responsibility? Don't just say, well, we said those things because that's, you know, what we said back in the day before we were somebody. Okay, but you still said those things and they still were wrong. Whether you were somebody or nobody, even if I said those things, that was wrong. And I'm a nobody. Okay, that's wrong. You know, you have to take accountability and it's nothing, it's, it doesn't hurt to just say, I apologize. And those were my actions when I was young and immature. I'm a different person now. And I do, I'm not going to deny that I said those things because you can clearly see them. But like I said, I've grown and I've learned from that. There's nothing wrong with saying something like that. Okay, all this popping off and going back and forth with the, with people on Twitter, it's just not necessary because that just makes the situation worse. It makes it funny for other people, but it makes it worse for you sometimes. So, y'all tell me how y'all feel about that. Then we get into Dr. Dre, baby. Talk about deadbeat, bitch, okay? So, not only do Dr. Dre beat bitches and got a record of beating bitches, he a deadbeat too? We gonna add that to the picture too? Girl... A 37-year-old woman named Latanya Young came out whose mother is um, Lisa Johnson, who also has two other kids with Dr. Dre. She came out, you know, and said that she has not spoken to her father, seen her father in 17 years. The lady is 37. So that's what, 20? Since she was 20? She said she don't even have his phone number. And mostly what she want is closure, Okay. Um, the, her parents broke up when she was like five years old. She don't want any money from him. She's currently trying to apply for a uh, FedEx job to be a driver. And at this point, you know, and I know some, some beat, some people, some people may look at it and think like, then what you come out for? I mean, everybody's not at the money and truth be told, I feel like she's not at the money. I feel like she, when she says that she's not after the money, she genuinely mean that. Um, sometimes you just want people to know that you are here. And if you are like, that just a testament of your character. Sometimes we be looking up to these people and admiring them and their personal life be a mess. And you just like, you good on the outside with your music, musicianship and the creativity that you put out and the products that you put out, but your personal life is a mess and it's something not to be admired. What is the reason that you didn't talk to this girl? There is something missing in between this story that I need to know, okay? But if it's nothing there and he just stopped talking to her and act like she don't exist or whatever, that's fucked up. Which makes me wonder, do he talk to the other two? What's the relationship with the other two kids that she he got with her mama? I'm confused about that. See, it's stuff missing in the story, and I need to know. Um, You guys tell me how you feel about that. So, Tiana Taylor. Um, hmm, interesting case. So, Tiana Taylor, during the time uh, last week, they were doing, like, on Spotify, the end of the year, you know, review of how much you listen to a certain artist, who's your top five artists, who, how many hours you spent listening to music on Spotify throughout your whole 2020. And, you know, she posted a screen cap of how many people, how many streams her um, album was getting or she was getting as an artist. And then she put a little note up there basically saying that she's about to go into retirement. And on her part... I was like, retirement, girl? No, bitch. I need some more music, okay? I need some more music. I don't care how y'all feel about Tiana Taylor. I like her. I really do. I like her as a human being, and I like her as an artist because I like her voice when she sings. I like the relationship that she has with Iman. It seems very genuine and very much loving. You know, I love her little daughter. I, I love their whole little family union, unit. Um, She seems like a fun individual to be around. And to talk about retirement, um, I think it's too early in the game for her to talk about retirement. And she has to come out and clear it up and basically say it's not that she's running away. It's that, that she's trying to get dropped from her record label, Def Jam. Okay. And I should have known she probably still feeling some way. Because remember when she put out that Keep the Same Energy album, KTSE album, um, and Kanye was producing all these albums and it was supposed to come out at this particular time. And then it was, it didn't come out at the time that it was supposed to, it was late coming out and then it wasn't the complete album. Okay. That they totally screwed her on that. And so, you know, that probably left a bad taste in her mouth. And then she said the label, um, and that was part of good music. 
I don't know if she's still with good music, but she's talking about Def Jam, how basically she feel undervalued. Um, she's doing most of the work. They don't do the promo. She's doing all of the work. And it's like you got this big machine behind you that's not working, okay? And she just feel underappreciated, undervalued, and she wants them to drop her. That's basically what she wants. She wants them to drop her, you know, so she can go ahead and probably go the independent route and be able to do what she needs to do. And I feel like these that's the that's the downfall and this is a story that we hear too many times especially this day and age and it's been going on through, since the music business started getting with these big um labels thinking that you know they'll give you all this stuff to entice you to come over you know but then once it's time to put in work you get put to the background and they don't deem or see you as important as anybody else the other artists or whatever and so you get the shit end of the stick. And that's what it feel like. You know, they'll promise you all of this, promise you all of that. But then when it comes time to actually come through with stuff, it's like taking forever for the album to come out, taking forever for this to happen. Nobody is on my team. I'm not getting a budget and stuff like that. We've seen this one too many times. And it needs to stop. It needs to stop. We need to, the, the, the music industry needs to stop giving out shitty record contracts that people can't get out of. You know, stop being lazy. Back in the day, they used to have a fucking media training type of uh, course. You know what I'm saying? Somebody that actually taught these people how to act in public and do all this stuff. Like, and to, to work their stage presence and stuff like that. They don't do no shit like that no more. We need the Barry Gordon's bag. Okay, for real, for real. But I feel what Tiana is saying and... I hope she really don't retire. 9 out of 10, she's not going to retire. But I do hope she's able to get from underneath Def Jam, um, if that's what she needs to do. Um, moving on from that, we got the story of Wendy Williams. Now, Wendy Williams, the story came out saying that her mother passed away, Shirley Williams. And she came on her show earlier this week, and she basically said that her mother passed away many, 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 many weeks ago. And I was like, okay, you know, so you kept that to yourself and you dealt with it. You've been dealing with it with yourself. Maybe that's why, you know, things have been going a little crazy on the show or whatever. That could be part of her grieving process and her keeping everything inside, trying not to let stuff show. But then a uh, conflicting video came out of her brother doing a live stream on his YouTube or whatever that basically said that the mama died last Sunday. What? <laughs> It's not funny. It's just crazy. I'm like, it's contradictory. She said many, many weeks ago, and now he's saying last Sunday. Girl, which one is it? Which one is it? But either way, rest in peace to Miss Shirley. I said, that's crazy. That is crazy. Um, Floyd Mayweather and Jake Paul are set to have a boxing match February 20th, 2021. Will you guys be watching? Ashley won't because Ashley really don't care. Just like I didn't care about the last fight, boxing ain't my thing, okay? Boxing's not my thing, but, you know, it is what it is. Um, Speaking of boxing and speaking of Jake Paul, girl, Jameel Hill and what's her name? Jameel Hill and Kari Champion, they got this show on Vice TV I guess they talk about sports and all this stuff. I really don't watch. And I seen a clip and they was trending this morning and over a clip that had been released of them asking multiple times, multiple times. Jake Paul was knocking out a black man racist, knocking out Nate Robinson racist because he was black. Madrid Jamil was laughing when she said it. And I knew she wasn't being serious. And we all know, like, you can't do what you did, okay? It was a Twitter joke. It was a joke that was put on Twitter, I guess, that was going around. Mind you, I never saw this joke. And even if I would have saw it on Twitter, I wouldn't even thought it was funny. I would have thought it was stupid, okay? And it wasn't nothing of a joke that was worth you know, repeating on live TV, okay? Because not everybody follows whoever put the tweet out and would have gotten the fact that, oh, I'm just taking this joke from Twitter and I'm just, you know, playing around with it. That's what it was. It was just a joke. You need to know the context and all this stuff. It was stupid, though. It was stupid, though, because you got people up in the uproar like, 
why you have to bring race into this? Just because it's a black and a white person having a fighting match doesn't mean that it's racist. Like Jay Paul said, it's a fucking sport. Okay, and he was getting frustrated, you know. And I'm just sitting here like, did they really ask this question? That's stupid as hell. Y'all dumb as shit. Like, that's race baiting, if you ask me, okay? That's one of the questions that you should have just kept on the cutting room floor. Somebody should have went over your questions and went over what you was going to be saying to this man and said, no, I don't think that's going to fly. I think it's probably going to get misconstrued. I think people are probably going to misunderstand, probably going to take it uh, too literal and not get the fact that it's a joke. Even if you're laughing, they're not going to get the fact that it's a joke, okay? Because it was stupid. It was stupid. Girl, I was about to go in on their ass. I was like, see? And Jamil Hill always up in some shit, though. She always up in some shit, though. But, you know, y'all tell me how y'all feel about it. Um, Couple news. Danny Lee. Is that how you say her name? The single that dating the baby. Girl, she didn't put out there that she dating the baby. You know, she didn't put out multiple posts. All right. All of a sudden, back to back, back to back, because the shade room at one point one day this week um, was just posting her, posting her over the weekend or whatever of her and the baby and the baby liking her tweets and liking her uh, Instagram post and him in her Instagram story and him, uh, she feeding him lamb chops and all this stuff. And I'm just sitting here like, okay, them doing dances together and all this stuff, you doing all that and whatever. I said, I ain't never seen the baby with a bitch this much, okay? He wasn't even with Mimi that much like that. And I said, wait a minute, I thought you and Mimi, his baby mama, I thought y'all was still together. Bitch, what's going on? Girl, it's a mess. It's a triangle that's going on, okay? And the thing about it is, Danny is the type of person that gives me that feel like, She's a pick me type of bitch. Like, oh, pick me, pick me, pick me type of bitch. And I just, you know, like she trying to prove a point like, yes, that's my man or whatever. You know, like she acting like, and I understand wanting to show your bae off and being proud of your bae, especially if they're uh, uh, doing big things or whatever. But she coming off more so to me like a high school teenage girl that just got her first boyfriend and she got to show the world. You know, I don't know. I don't know. It just something about her is very unsettling to me. And I just can't put my finger on it. You know, uh, if you understand where I'm coming from and feel where I'm coming from, put it down in the comments. Oh, yeah, y'all. Let me tell you this. Let me take a pause for the calls. So I was thinking about doing another Q&A video. OK, um, because I'm working now. So that's part of the main reason why I'm working more now and my hours be changing up and I'll be tired when I come home. And that's why I don't necessarily go live. You know what I'm saying? Um, but I was looking to see if you wanted me to do another Q&A video. I want to do one of those because I have a lot of new subscribers. Um, and if so, I'm going to probably post something on Facebook. Or post something on Instagram and post something on Twitter. Um, and you can either send me a DM on Facebook or, or uh, send me a message on Facebook or send me a DM on Instagram or Twitter. Some questions that you need to ask um, when I ask them. Or I'm going to put it in the community page. Okay? And y'all can put y'all questions there. And also, like, do you guys want me to bring back Ask Ashley? I was thinking about that earlier today. Like, man, I need some. I want some more content on my channel to mix it up a little bit. And I was like, should I bring back Ask Ashley? So if y'all want those to put it down in the comments, let me know what's up. And if I post it on my community page, if I remember to post it on my community page, put y'all comments and opinions on there. Okay. Anyway, moving on from that, back to the regular schedule program. Um, Sierra. Sierra and BK from Love and Hip Hop Atlanta engaged. Okay. Jim, Jeremiah and um, Good News. Very good news. Jeremiah was released from the hospital. You guys remember when he was damn near on his deathbed in ICU in critical, very critical condition on a ventilator for COVID. Um, and, you know... His progress has been steadily getting better and better and better. And he is now released, you know, put out a picture of him being in the hospital, you know, just looking real rough and scraggly. And then, you know, as soon as you get out that hospital, you feeling good. What we going to do? 
can get some, get, get a bath, a shower, okay? A good shower, put some clothes on and go do what? Get our hair did. He went and got his locks done. I said, I know that's right because that would have been me. Bitch, soon as quarantine cut open, bitch, soon as that shit was done, Ashley said, let me get to the shop right quick, right now. That was me. But it's a good thing that he is feeling well and he is looking better. So God is good on that front. Um, unfortunately, we have some bad news that we do have to speak on. Um, the actress, Natalie Deshelle Reed, who played on Set It All. He ain't even from Acorn. <laughs> Had a little role in Set It All. Um, she played most notably known for Mickey on Babs. Um... And I'm the Miss Monifa. That is my favorite thing, bitch. Bitch, do love. Bitch, get me the witch. <laughs> that is my scene. That is my favorite scene out the movie. But, um, you know, she played one of the uh, stepsisters on the Cinderella with Brandy. Uh, she also played in How to Be a Player. She played on uh, one the, the angry sister, one of the angry sisters. The one that was verbally abusive to her husband, that treated her husband like a damn dog. Okay, on um, Medea's Big Happy Family. You know, she, the movie. Um, <clears throat> and she played Eve's friends, one of Eve's best friends on um, Eve's show. And she unfortunately passed away. She We got the news, I think, Monday? We got the news Monday. She passed away from colon cancer. And they said that she had been diagnosed earlier this year. And in the last couple of weeks of her life, she was on hospice care. And that is very... She was only 53 years old. That is very... And then Kareem Abdul, but Jabbar, he found out he got prostate cancer. Like, the cancer is just... It's just an ugly disease. And... It's just, it's, it's, ugh, I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. And I pray for any and everybody that's had to go through that. Um, seeing a loved one or going through it yourself with that has gone through it. It's nothing that I want to experience. I've seen firsthand what it can do to a person. And, you know, my thoughts and prayers go out to, um, uh, Natalie and her family and her friends. She was a beautiful soul. She was a funny individual. I loved her. I just loved just about everything that she was in. And it's unfortunate that we no longer have her here. But um, <clears throat> we can cherish the moments that we did have with her. And we can, at least we got her on film. I feel sorry for Halle Berry, too, because Halle Berry just couldn't put it together. Girl, listen, Halle Berry had posted like three days before the news broke a clip of them doing promo for the movie Baps back in the day as the characters that they was in and then got hit with this news. So she didn't know. And that was the crazy thing about it. And I felt so bad for her. So bad. But rest in peace to Miss Natalie. Um, Victoria Monet, the singer, songwriter, she's pregnant um, by personal trainer, John Gaines, and he was also the dude that's in her moments video. I was like, all right, you know, she, mama look good though. Mama look good pregnant. She really do. Um, some random news. So congratulations to you, Victoria. Some random news. I don't know if this is real or not. According to Bow Wow, he said that Solange and Bow, uh, uh, Lil Wayne dated. And said it like everybody already knew this. Sir, what? I need to see pictures. I need to see pictures. I need to see ticket stubs. I need to see some type of receipt because I just, you know, Salon, she a little eccentric. She'll go to, she'll go, she, she ain't got a type. She, she really don't have a type. Okay. So it probably could have happened, but I need to know when. I need to know when and I need to go how. Okay. But anyway, that's that. Um, did y'all see the Red Table Talk, the recent episode of the Red Table Talk? Girl, I don't even watch Red Table Talk like that. And I seen Olivia Jade trending on Twitter the other day, Monday, and I was confused as to why she was trending. I was like, um, Becky and your daddy, ain't they in jail or whatever? You know, and if y'all don't know who o Olivia Jade is, she is the daughter of, you know, Aunt Becky, Lori Laughlin who played Aunt Becky on Full House, and her husband. And they were part of the, bar, what is it called, Varsity Blue scam, college scam, where they was these rich people getting these kids into college um, 
faking their credentials and basically buying their way into these colleges and stuff. And, you know, they spent like $500,000 for both of their daughters to get into college. And Olivia J was one of the ones that didn't even want to go and said that she was just going to college for the parties and the games. That's it, you know. And so she was on the Red Table Talk. I said, damn, Jada, y'all just let any and everybody come up on the Red Table Talk. What the fuck does she got to say? Okay? I, I, was, I was a little confused. And... But I went on ahead. It piqued my interest a little bit. So I went on ahead to see what it was about. And right off the bat, let me tell you something. Gammy, Gammy, Jada Pinkett's mama, she was me. Okay? And she was me. Mama was not here for it. Gammy was like, I don't understand why you got her on this show. Like, what do we need to know from her? What do we need? Why do we need to see her opinion and all this stuff in this whole situation? We see what it benefited her because at the end of the day, and what got me is that I really appreciate from Gammy is because not only did she, you know, convey this sentiment, how she felt to Jada before the interview, she also told Olivia this too. You know, your privilege and everything got you to the place that you're at. And even if your parents are in jail, they get back out. Nothing's really else going to happen to them. Okay. You can't sit here and let me, I, it's hard for me to sit here and feel bad that you lost sponsorships and you not able to go back to school. And you know, this happened and that happened because in reality, this is what you, what y'all did. We're not the same. You know, you took a spot from somebody that could have really used it okay who actually could have earned that spot and we got people that's out here that not privileged that really have to put forth so much effort to get what you have okay you're not struggling like everybody else is struggling gammy told her straight and olivia took it okay and she agreed with it so i have to give it to olivia you know she took accountability for what happened even though technically speaking it wasn't her fault because it was her parents fault but you know she was just had her blinders all and now she sees everything that's going on unless she was trying to just play it up because she was with the smiths but it seemed like she got it it seemed like she got it um she, gammy just told the real and that's probably one reason why i stopped watching the red table talk constantly on a consistent basis is because depending on the guests that jada has on there it's like she coddles them and jada was coddling this girl and I'm so tired of Willow just, mmm, yeah, right, mmm. <laughs> I said, bitch, I didn't miss that at all until I heard that. I said, girl, Willow, why are you here? <laughs> why are you here at this particular moment? That's all you got to offer. That's all you got to offer? Girl, mmm. <laughs> Oh, okay, right. I'll be like, J uh, uh, Willow, go back to bed, okay? Go back to bed. <laughs> but uh, that's what was going on. If you saw the Red Table Talk with Olivia J, put it down in the comments what you thought was going on and your opinions about it. Um, a club out there in Ohio got shut down for COVID violations during a Trey Stone concert. It had over 500 people up in there, okay? Mind you, what make this worse is, it's just like the true kitchen brunch shit. The fact that, you know, I thought restaurants was closed down, you know, no indoor dining or whatever. was supposed to be happening during this phase again, during the lockdown again or the shutdown. Um, so why are we out doing brunch in the middle of a pandemic? I forgot to mention that last week, but that's what we've been playing on my mind. And then I'm thinking about this whole... 500 people, that means body, and you, clubs, most clubs are small. Most clubs are small. This is actually obviously big enough to have 500 people or whatever in there, plus everybody else that's going to be on the stage and that's part of the crew and everybody else that works there, whatever. So that means we literally cannot social distance. We literally are shoulder to shoulder, back to back, stomach to fucking stomach, bitch, breath to breath. And nobody barely had a mask on in there. Trey Songs is up there performing. And you mean to tell me that you couldn't wait until things got a little bit safer? You struggling for money that much? Okay. And what made it so much worse for Trey Song is the fact that he had COVID. He had COVID in October. And you really risking yourself. You can't get it again. There have been cases of people getting it again. 
who've had it before. So you risk yourself for what? For what? All of y'all are risking y'all lives. Y'all not taking it seriously. Yes, I understand we want to get back to normalcy, but you really going to risk your life to go see a fucking Trey Song concert to hear that man yodel? Bitch, are you serious? Are you serious? Is it really that serious? In the cold. In Ohio. The mid-fucking West. Bitch, are you serious? I would never. Bitch, Beyonce would have to um fly me out there to her goddamn house. Okay? And I have to look at the concert in her yard while she in the house. Okay? That's what it had to be. You know what I'm saying? Bitch, FaceTime me and sing to me on FaceTime. That's what it would have to be, bitch. Because I'm not finna go nowhere right about now. Okay? I don't care how much I'm offended you, how much I love you, whatever. But, bitch, you're not about to risk my health and I'm not about to risk yours. Okay? That's what y'all not thinking about. Y'all not taking this shit serious. Too many people going out here still partying, still playing games and shit like that. No mask on. Still just doing shit like everything is normal. We are in a new normal right now. You have to understand that and you need to adjust to it. You don't need to get out there and shake your ass that bad. If you want to shake your ass, bitch, turn the motherfucking music on and shake your ass in your goddamn room. Put your friends on fucking FaceTime and shake your ass with them. You can do that. Get your sister, get your brother, whatever, and shake your ass with them. Okay? You paying all this money for some watered down ass drink when you can go to the liquor store and get the real shit and get fucked up in your house. Turn the fucking music on and get fucked up in your house. You will be a whole lot safer then. Girl, that shit made me mad. Dumb asses. I wish a bitch would. Ooh, ooh, y'all stupid. Quit being so stupid. Then College Hill's supposed to be coming back in 2020 at Jackson State University in Mississippi. That's where Deion Sanders is down there um, doing a little football coaching out there. But they say it's going to be with a twist. Now, I'm not sure if it's just going to be celebrities trying to get higher education or is it going to be a mixture of regular people and celebrities. But celebrities going to be involved. And I don't know how I feel about that. Okay, I want it to be authentic with nobodies. I don't want no celebrities on here. I want nobodies that we know so we can get to know them. And I don't feel like it's going to be like the old College Hills. I really don't. Nice try, but I'm not too enthused. I'm not too enthused. Uh, speaking of the COVID shit, uh, Biden wants to give out 100 million va uh, COVID vaccines during his first 100 days. And he wants us to wear masks for the first 100 days. I just seen a video of this British lady. She the first person to receive the vaccine. And I was like, okay, girl, you know, let's get an update on to see how she doing. <laughs> That's all I need to know. Is mama okay? Mama ain't having no side effects yet. That's all I need to know. Um, little baby didn't got his ass into some trouble. Some porn star and came out saying that she didn't, he paid her like some money to have sex with him or something like that. Mind you, he's in a whole ass relationship with a whole ass baby. And his girlfriend just brought him a whole bunch of expensive ass gifts for his birthday the other week. Girl, these niggas can't do right. These niggas can't do right. She gonna stay with him. She gonna stay with him. I ain't even really want to mention this, but she gonna stay with him. I'm, I'm, I'm. I keep on hearing about Lil Baby and seeing about him, but I have yet to hear his music. And I need to take some time out to actually listen to his music. I've done that for a couple of these rap artists that I kind of pushed off to the side. And then I actually listened to the music and I was like, okay, but well, I actually kind of like your music. So, you know, maybe that's what it'll be with him. Um, There's a True Blood re uh, reboot that's supposed to be in, root, uh, in works in HBO. Let it go. Let it go. I ain't like the last season. I ain't like the C-series finale. No. Don't reboot shit. Let that shit go. Okay? True Blood was my show. I don't need you fucking it up anymore. Let it go. A Boogie with the hoodie. He got arrested um, <clears throat> on drugs and weapon charges following uh, a shooting at a New Jersey nightclub during his uh, birthday. What is with these rappers getting in trouble these days? Like, I just don't get it. Like, it's like one rapper after the next. He got in trouble. Then G Herbo, he had plead not guilty to the charges that he was facing that I told y'all about last week about him, you know, using stolen IDs to spend over a million dollars over the four years on exotic trips and, you know, cars and rentals and designer animal dogs and stuff like that. And, you know, he's facing up to six years in prison if he's found guilty. And the lawyer then put out that him and his girlfriend, who is fabulous, 
girl, Emily B's daughter, oldest daughter, put out that they, that's his fiance and that she's four months pregnant. I said, damn, you just put out all that information like that. But it's just a mess. And you know who else a mess? Brandy B. That's one person that we haven't spoken about on here since she was on Love and Hip Hop with Max Lux. And I forget all about his crooked ass teeth. Okay? She was on Instagram Live and they had got into it. It seemed like they was up there fighting and he was beating her ass. Okay? And people was just like, you know, listen to what was saying. And I think at one point in the live, she did say, call the police, call the police. And, you know, um, it did allege that he was beating her ass or had, uh, used to beat up on her or something like that. And when all of it was over, you know, people was just being really, really concerned about her. And... You know, he come out trying to say that he ain't beat her ass. He didn't touch her or nothing. She want to come out and say, no, he didn't touch me. I was the one that was the aggressor. I was actually choking him out. And then she gets on this video that I seen earlier today. And baby, she was just trying to defend the whole thing. And it was like the way that he was trying to defend himself and him talking about you lame ass niggas and all this stuff, using all type of explicits and stuff. I'm just sitting here like that does not help your case. But then the way that she looked on this video, her mouth seems crooked. I was just like, something is not right. And you can tell, like, it's a lot more stuff that's going on that she's trying to hide. And I just pray that she get out that situation before it get worse. Because even if he has not put hands on her and you want to say it's just verbal abuse, stuff can escalate. It's verbal abuse one day and it can be, it's mental abuse one day, emotional abuse the next day, verbal abuse the next day, and then actual physical abuse the other. Okay. Get that girl some help. You need some real good people around you. But, um, anyway, you guys, I hope y'all can hear this video since somebody want to complain that they can't hear. Listen, turn it up, put your ear to it. That's all I can say, okay? Until I get my camera, this is what we're going to have to deal with. But anyway, I hope y'all enjoy the video. I hope y'all have a good week. And I will see you guys later. Peace.